So that, those two are the easiest to make. Now we move on to what's a little harder to make. Um, our first group here is, which I can't even read on my presentation because it's so small, uh, is the scandium, dysprosium, homium, and erbium group. Uh, what separates these materials is they've got fairly high melting points, but low, low to intermediate boiling points. They, so they have enough vapor pressure that we can actually sublime them. We can uh, vacuum cast them. The problem is the, the, uh, the vapor pressures are getting higher, so we actually start losing material with the, vapor, with the vacuum casting. And dysprosium, for example, you actually have to lose 30% of the material to get rid of fluorine that may be carried over. Uh, these are easily purified in the sublimation with respect to these materials, the oxygen, nitrogen, carbon, and tantalum. Uh, process, again, very similar. Dry the oxide, fluorinate it, reduce it with calcium, remove the slag. We'll do the same thing, three reductions, excluding, excluding scandium, we only do one. Vacuum cast it. In this case, we sublimate it. We're going from solid to gas to purify it, machine off, and arc cast. Again, here's uh, reduction process. Here's some dysprosium metal as, as reduced. This is calcium fluoride slag. You can see in there that some of the calcium fluoride had stuck. This image here is of our sublimation process. The top can is our collection can. So down here, we're at a very high temperature up here. Uh, we're probably around 900 degrees centigrade. Um, so the gas moves up from the boiler, as we call it, into the collection can. And this is a picture of erbium as sublimed. You can see the erbium in here. This, is the, this was the sublimation or collection can. This would, this would have been the top in the, in the furnace. So you're looking uh, in the bottom. Lastly, the hardest group to make are yttrium, gadolinium, terbium, and lutetium. What makes these hard, hard to process is right here. They really like to eat the crucible. We'll see a picture of that in a minute. But these, these materials have high melting points and high boiling points, but, uh, or low vapor pressures, but they're not low enough that we can't pure them, purify them with respect to with distillation. In fact, we could probably pour them like we do here, but we're not going to have near as pure material as if we distill them. So to get to the maximum purity, we have to distill them. Uh, a very slow distillation will reduce oxygen, nitrogen, carbon. This is a picture of lutetium that was distilled. And I don't know if you recognize, can tell the difference between what the metal looks like with the erbium and what this metal looks like. The erbium was very smooth, I shouldn't say smooth, not as lumpy as this is. And that's due to the high temperatures we're at. And the distillation is very difficult because of refluxing. And that's where some of the metal collects in the distillation can, but it remelts and runs down the side of the crucible. And we can see here, we lit the inside of this can, this can was 30 mils thick, and we ate right through it because that distilled material that was refluxing was so, didn't have any tantalum in it, it can absorb quite a bit of tantalum, uh, absorbed it as it ran right down the crucible. And then as soon as you have holes on the side of your crucible, your metal goes everywhere inside your containment. You see at the bottom of the screen that scandium can absorb about 11 weight percent tantalum. So that's quite a bit. On the other hand, cerium, where we don't have this problem, it's on the order of 0.1 atomic percent. This guy's sitting down here on the bottom of our chart. We haven't talked about him, and he's wanting us to talk about him. Um, what we do at the lab, we call low temperature fluorination, is a one step we can use where we take the solid oxide and convert it with a gas. Well, if you want to go to the next level of purity, you take that fluoride you just prepared through that route and you melt it under HF gas. And the local slang is called topping. So if you hear anyone talk about topped fluoride from Ames, what they're simply talking about is fluoride that has been melted. We call it topping simply because the furnace design, HF gas comes in, floats over the top of the liquid and comes out the top. It's topping. Um, so it's a local slang that may confuse some people. We do top for two of our processes. We don't top for that process, uh, the scandium group. 
This is a picture of one of our top fluorides, and if we put the color chart up there, you can easily tell it's praseodymium fluoride. Very pretty green uh, material, um, fused together. It's kind of like rock candy, if you're familiar with rock candy, or large chunks of salt. Again, we call it topped. It's just local slang. Well, why do we top it? Well, let's talk about the fluoride process. One of the commercial processes you can use to make fluorides without HF, gas, is to convert rare earth oxide with ammonium bifluoride. And you can get decent, decent uh, purity fluorides with this. However, it'll be, it'll be slightly high in oxygen, higher than what we want. And there are several other methods to get to the fluor fluoride. Um, our low temperature process is this reaction, which we saw earlier. We end up with the solid rare earth fluoride, leftover water, and argon was our kind of what we could call a process gas, sweep gas. We can get down to about 10 part per million to 1,000 part per million oxygen. But if we want to go better than that, we actually have to do the topping process, which is simply taking the fluoride, melting it under HF gas, and it's, not, it's, it's a very minor reaction. I've got water just coming off here, uh, but there are trace elements that come out. We can get down to less than 10 uh, or not detectable levels of oxygen in our fluoride if we're very, very careful. Here I've expanded the reaction process, and we comments other trace mater materials will come out of this process. And we can see here the lanthanum that is topped, the yes indicates topped in this column, no, no yes means it wasn't. We see a significant drop in these metals in the top fluoride because they're coming off as a volatile fluoride species. Cerium, we see it again, significant drop, not so significant in some of these for, for turbine, but we do see a drop in silicon. You actually see, saw a gain there. Isn't that exciting for us? So we've seen a whole bunch of different small parts, pixels to the, to the rare earth puzzle of how we make the high purity rare earths, starting with high purity oxides, metals, clean crucible materials, careful conversion to, to fluoride where we, where we need the fluorides, and then carefully uh, doing things like sublimation or distillation to remove things, the low, low volatility impurities we want. So this, like I said, starting with our materials, end up with high purity, purity metal. But it's just simply not just starting with the materials that are high purity. Here's uh, some data on, on materials made in several different methods. The first one was just, we used typically commercial purity starting materials, and you can see the oxygen content is listed for these different metals that we made. If we go with the ammonium bifluoride route of preparing the, the fluoride and mixing with our purified calcium, we end up slightly better, but st still fairly high oxygen content. If we take our top fluoride, the fluoride that is the purest, hardest to make, use our purified calcium, but we handle it in air, not particularly paying attention to that fact, we get essentially the same thing for oxygen content. So all this extra effort was wasted. If we start with the low temperature fluoride, purified calcium handled in the glove box, you can even just see just right here in the cerium and lanthanum, order of magnitude difference in the oxygen content. Then if we start with the top fluoride handled in the glove box, purified calcium, um, here in the cerium is even lower oxygen content. And significantly lower, obviously, than the first two lines. So not only is it start with pure materials, keep them pure, but you also have to have some fidelity to your process. You have to keep things uh, clean. You have to use good vacuum technique. You have to use good glove box technique. Um, you can't let things sit around too, for too long to react with other things. So to steal a phrase from uh, Marines, I'll say Semper Fi, always be faithful to the process. So that's how we make the rare earths here at Ames Laboratory in high purity. If you'd like more detail or would like to discuss it further, feel free to contact us by email, phone, or stop by my office if you're in Ames.